They're looking pretty intimidating at the moment as we are getting into now the final phase of the bands in five man. Well, it's presumably time to take a look at that mid matchup. You took your Ember Spirit way back in the first phase, and then they banned out nothing but carries, but still kind of let Faceless Void through, so it's it's time to shift things up a little bit, just make sure RRL doesn't get uh, bullied around a little bit here as they do start with the Batrider ban. Yeah, oh man. In 5 my Mize, they could have taken, taken this in such an interesting direction. I was really expecting CM Lone Druid to be their second phase there, and again, Argus's Lone Druid yesterday was one of the biggest successes they've had in the tournament so far, but it doesn't happen. And we'll have to see maybe that hero gets all the way let through and they decide to go for it just because it still might be there. But uh, I don't know. It's going to be hard now. And they're playing versus Faceless Void. So as we always say, your room for error, your margin for mistakes just doesn't really exist. And you have to be the team to now push that tempo ahead you have to punish the team that has faceless void you have to punish the person that doesn't have their ultimate for half the game but will five men be able to do that uh, it's going to be a kind of a tall order especially because even though this bounty hunter might again help the ember spirit out at least with the vision for his slights well you're not really hitting buildings right now if you're five men midas you're not really pushing objectives here and that's where felt just have the free hero that does that i almost feel like I don't know, in, in some roundabout way, they could turn this draft around and look for, like, a visage and then hope that they can move things mm -hmm. around and then, I don't know, they make Bounty Hunter carry and then Ember goes mid, because I, I do have some problems right now with their draft. Well, that would be an interesting switch-up. Don't really know if that's something Argus would be down for, but... Oh, circumstances may make that better than the alternative. But for now, five-man, they're taking a lot of time. Thinking over this final ban, we do eventually get the pick, and it is going to be the Puck ban, so... E.T. The Puck has been banned out still pretty frequently. Even when it's not, though, a lot of teams aren't taking it, but it just still seems like a hero where it only takes one time, right? Where you forget, where you think, oh, they won't pick it, and then Puck gets picked up and you're... Yeah, and the only problem, I think, with that is that, well, there's still Lena. Told you can just play the hero he's played the entire tournament, which is not going to be a bad option for them either. Of course, we've seen in the Ember lane, you know, it's it's a very skill based matchup. All you need to do is dodge out the LSA, and then you're kind of fine, but you still end up getting clicked a lot. And versus Clockwork, Lena might not sound the best, but there is a lot of safety. Ooh. And five man minus pick sniper. Okay, uh. well if they can't close the gap, then maybe there's something to play for here. But, I don't know. It's a very risky pick, and especially because, well, if the Faces Void ever finds him, ever, it's over. Game's blown wide open. This is also where, if they want to, the Lena pick looks maybe a little bit less good now, but yeah. they could just pick Leshrac and then just look to go through every single building, and even if you're shrapneled and getting right-clicked by a sniper, Edict still does its job. And again, if you are getting right-clicked as a Leshrac, that makes room for the jump from your Beastmaster, from your Faceless Void, even from the Hoodwink at that point. So I don't know. That seems like a good choice as well. We'll have to see what Soldier just wants to play and could just pick something to, again, jump the Sniper if they want to almost quadruple down on the closing the gap on that hero, which is smart if they want to feel and they do feel like they're pressured, but let's see it. And they do quadruple okay. down. They say, yeah, Storm Spirit lands well versus the Ember. Should be fine. Storm's not been too hot in this tournament. I think it's got an abysmal win rate. It's probably 20% or less, but, you know, we'll have to see if Solji can turn the tides here and classic counter versus the sniper. So keeping in line with the core counter picks that last pick does afford you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the best performance we saw from the Storm in this event was uh, the game Guts played on it, and even that was still in a losing effort, so... Not the best track record, but in theory, as you said, it really doubles, triples, quadruples down on their aggression onto that back line. And if RRL on the... St Actually, hold up. RRL on the sniper. Uh, so that's a little bit of a change up. Still the same principle. If you jump on him, he dies. But it is going to be sniper mid, offlane bounty, and then Argus is apparently going to play the Ember Spirit. Yeah, and, you know, trying to think about why uh, and i think a large reason could be just the beastmaster lane even though i feel like you just 
pop, take aim, and then you probably can kill the boar in four or five hits, but okay. Maybe they just think that uh, Argus is going to have a little bit of a better time, and RRL will have a safer time versus the Storm Spirit until level six, where Solji could just solo kill you. So, needs to be very careful about that timing, but yeah, we'll have to see. Definitely not a changeup that I was kind of expecting here, because lane-wise, I feel like uh, Argus also might struggle a little bit in the melee matchup versus the Beastmaster and the Hoodwink. But, again, we'll have to see and see how they do decide to actually lane things up, whether or not this is a lane, you know, roll swap, or this is just Argus saying, I want to play Ember Spirit, RL, you play Sniper. Who knows? Maybe Argus doesn't play Sniper, for all we know, but mm -hmm. we'll have to see. Yeah, the, the players have changed, but we'll see if the lanes actually switch up to a, to follow that, or it could just be personal choice, but no, well, here we go. First game of the day. As we mentioned, Belt playing for potential seeding, five-man Midas playing for pride, as they are still trying to get that very first win on the board, trying to avoid the uh, the Owen 16 start as whoa. Wish I'd learned how to read. Oh, he started... Started with a pause. That's always funky, but well, one side says that they're already ready to go, E.T., so... Oh, okay. Five men might have still need maybe just a little bit of extra time, but hopefully we can get this one underway in just a, another few moments. Yeah, and it was so quick. We only get to see the answer to one of these, and yeah, it looks like Aro will just go mid. He's got the mid items. We're going to buy up his ward probably in a sec here. So Argus is just going to play safely in Ember Spirit versus the Beastmaster. And we'll have to see if uh, Fade is going to be put under any additional pressure there. Or if he is just going to uh, Wild Axe spam you out and make your lane in life a little bit more difficult. Even though he can probably afford to maybe get boars in that lane. Versus the Beastmaster or versus the, uh, the Clockwork I think could be a little bit difficult. But... We'll see, because if they do decide to run the Clockwork and the Ember in the same lane, you got that double, nasty double melee situation that just doesn't feel right. But Moonlight's walking bottom, so... Yeah, it looks like Feeling will probably go top with the Ember Spirit, and... Of course, Battery is sold against the Boars. The Boars will die very quickly if Feeling can close the gap onto them. But, that's the beauty of Beastmaster. If you think your Boars are gonna die? Just don't get them. Hmm? He's entirely capable of just ignoring it entirely as Fade... Looking at the item build here, just trying to get a head start on that Dom Helm. Doesn't really have a lot here. It's kind of bare bones with the Quelling Blade and one stack of Tangos, but the Beastmaster needs his Dom Helm. That's the literal only goal that he has for the first few minutes, so understandable there. As RRL drops the ward so that, uh, so that they don't think that he has it. A little bit of a sneaky play here. Is it going to matter? Who knows? But at least he's trying to make some sort of maneuver at this point. But we can it's a, a play for us alone. Yeah, we nobody, can just see it. Nobody, nobody saw it. Nobody had his, his word And then place. he just puts it down. Yeah. Okay. And then he just puts in the ultra defensive spot. What uh, can you do? Meanwhile, so we'll see. First comes out there onto a couple. So they do know that he's in the area. But. I don't think he can really contest this rune at this point. His uh, his curse isn't going to be back up in time, so Lies should get this, but... Oh, no, he doesn't. The Sansa just walks forward and grabs it. That's... Okay, I thought he was really going to be punished for that, to be perfectly honest, but Moonlight kind of stepped away to try and grab a rune of his own, which he did get, at least, so it does secure a 2-2 split, but... Position 5 Sansa kind of just gets away with one there. Yeah, just wins the clicking battle and then gets the walk to lane and we'll see how much uh the silencer is going to be obnoxious because of course it hasn't really been proven by every single team even though the numbers definitely look good but i feel like in this lane especially it's going to be very annoying for moonlight because of course you have to fade bolt for the range creep so you can arcane curse you can at least make him take the additional damage and moonlight pretty much always has to get forced into that fade bolt because you can't afford to just get denied over and over again otherwise you really start to suffer in lane so ends up being a pretty difficult decision to make hmm. meantime lies just taking a little bit of gold away from the faceless void every couple of seconds and other than that he really hasn't done anything else there we go there's his first last hit that had been the only focus for him to this point is well Oh, this bottom lane is just kind of weird. I don't, I don't really know exactly how it works. Still not sure 
how the offlane bounty is really supposed to operate. We've seen it a couple of times now, E.T., and it just hasn't felt like what we've seen from it is what lies wants from the hero. Yeah, and of course, he's got his Vanguard queued up. This is what he won for in his mm -hmm. last game. And, of course, once you get that Ring of Health, it's very hard to push you out, but you just don't push in the wave. You don't really do that much damage until you get your level 6. You're in a side lane, though, so you don't get your level 6 quickly. And you can't farm neutral camps. So it's, uh... Doesn't have a lot of things going for him, <laughs> yeah, let's say. But, great. um... But, of course, once you can actually get that level 6, the Ember starts rotating. Maybe you start getting a little bit of that snowball. And that's the one thing about Bounty Hunter. If you get to win fights once you have your levels, well, then you get to reap the rewards. But the problem 5 men might have been having is winning team fights after the game actually gets started. So... We'll see if they can maybe do a little bit better. But so far in the lanes, though, everything looks pretty nice. A little bit of damage being traded back and forth, but nothing too serious. But I don't know. If you're five-man Midas, I think you're just okay with this start so far, especially for Argus. Double-digit last hits already. Feeling's got feeling's to be a little bit careful here. Yeah, because of this. The Bushwhack comes in. Fade doesn't have mana for axes, although if you pop the mango, we could do it. But... The right clicks get it done anyway. The Warden sets it up, the boar finds the kill, and that's first blood to the Beastmaster. Now they get to bully Argus a little. Oh, and they're oh, both gambling here. Boom, yeah. There's a bushwhack. Okay. Still has that shield, though, and they need to oh. kill him with physical damage, and it looks like he's going to be able to walk away. Both sides walk away, and with the Clockwork coming up, they can't really afford to stay around any longer. Bit of a risky maneuver there, and yeah, if... Maybe if he has two points in the axis instead of the boar, that hits a little bit harder, but... In fairness, the boar got him first blood, so you can't really be too critical of that, so... All's well that ends well, if you're felt, and on the five-man Midas side, Argus just gets to kind of stay in the lane, he gets a tango from his teammate, so... He's just gonna continue farming up here as well. Yeah, it's just where number-wise, they just can't break through level two shield, just barely out of damage range for both of their spells here. But oh. physical damage, okay. Yeah, he's taking a lot, of, a lot of harass. But again, just a situation where both sides get to walk away. But Argus doesn't have a salve anymore, so that's where Fade with the Helm of Iron Will already oh. built up. Moonlight survives Arcane Curse with 3 HP. He's going back to base, but at least he lives. This lane, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not easy as well with the time dilation dot that... Most likely it was also involved in that play. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of kill threat that can happen here. And then they deny all the range creeps getting pushed into lies. It's it's not fun. At least he has this ring of health, though. He's not taking that much damage, but it just feels like uh, this is a very slow burn type of uh, type of lane. Now he takes 20 whole gold per Janata, which, I mean, you know, you, you kind of joke around about it a little, but... Taking 20 gold away from your opponents every some odd seconds, it's... I mean, it's not so bad, right? I mean, you're basically stealing a creep from like, every 30 seconds or so in total. So, it is going to make up for that discrepancy in their last hitting a little bit as top lane Argus does get taken down. They're able to push through that shield and... Well, as you said, E.T., it's not easy, but eventually they do manage to just sort of brute force their way through it. Mm -hmm. Caught him in between not having his shield up, as well as, again, just not getting that much regen over from Feeling, mainly because Feeling is trying to rush out these boots so that way he can actually look for kill threat onto the Hoodwink, but until then, you know, Argus has just been having to buy his own. He even has to buy his own set of Tangos before he TPs back to the lane, because, yeah, you're not getting any more support from your Clockwork here. I think those are his boots coming out. He's actually able to pick it up, but unless he makes a play, then... Well, it's going to feel like a little bit more difficult for Argus, especially because Helm of the Dominator is done, coming out on the Crow. Got that pretty damn fast here, just shy of six minutes as it's coming out, and, well, that's when things get a little bit more concerning, right? That's when Fade's going to start maybe pushing a little bit more heavily, and if Argus loses the tower, he rotates into the jungle okay-ish, but... I feel like at this early stage in the game, it would still take him a little while to get up to speed. No, definitely would. And well, let's see. Six-minute rune happens. It comes, it goes. Moonlight gets an end rune. 
And Solji with level 6. Mid lane's been the quietest lane. Everybody's just kind of farming. Of course, in that lane, the sniper always gets more denies at the top. They do kill feeling, but the storm is still rotating over. They're looking for a play onto the Ember Spirit. And with the Helm of the Dominator and this many creeps, this could lead right into a tower push. You gotta be so careful right now if you're Argus, but no, they're in. This is it. Does he get the Vortex? Does he have Vortex? No, he doesn't, so he's just gotta run it down. Um, okay. Eh, who needs Vortex? It did cost him all of his mana, but they find the kill, and now, as you said, E.T., you've got your boar, you've got that satyr, you've got a siege creep, this tower's going down. Yeah, no, it's gonna be absolutely free. It's why they are already making plays towards bottom, but we'll have to see now if there's any response, or if 5 men Midas can just afford to take it kind of low and slow here, because Warren TP's mid, because there's a lot of XP for him to grab, so getting a little bit greedy here. They're trying to play in all three lanes, but again, unless they close the gap into that silencer, there's not really a way to kill the Void bottom. Supports are trying to move in here. Telekinesis onto the silencer. They're going to push him back with the cogs, so yeah, he should go down. I don't think Paradise yet. He's not level 6. He can't really do too much other than just get in there and start hacking away. He does actually do that, though, so turns it into a 1 for 1. I don't think he can really catch feeling here. He doesn't really have any significant damage, but okay. You're still able to find something there for your faceless void. Now he's got a little bit of time in the lane solo. He's closing in on his Midas ET, so... Okay, now he, now he might need to be a little bit careful. There's the time walk, though, to get him away. Mm -hmm. Is able to escape. Is looking for the Midas rush. Is only 100 gold away. And then, well, you've got a Midas on Faceless Void. A position we've seen so many players in this tournament already where you're just okay with this game going a little bit later now. And Lies is kind of being obnoxious, I suppose. He's still trying to rob him. But when you got no gold because you just bought out your item, then yeah. He's and RL. Sniper. Yeah, and he's just maybe dead. Yeah. Wow. Too much damage from the headshot alongside, yeah, just the haste rune also moving away from the penalty from take aim. I mean, the the only rune in which RRL could do anything to this faceless <laughs> right. void. Uh, bit of good fortune, and the time walk uh, actually came up as he died, so he couldn't even really just get himself away and walk off that damage. However, if Sniper's out of mid, well, Fade just kind of slides on in there. He and Solji take Moonlight out, who was just trying to sap some XP, but... This is a very well-placed, well-timed, rather, glyph being used to slow it down, but... Yeah, now they need to do this. They're actually going to pull the creep wave out, which means the Beastmaster can't just sort of stand there with his creeps, but... He's sticking around. Does he have roar? Yes, he does, so... Five Man Midas. Very nicely done defending the tower, but you do not want to go up that ramp. They're going to avoid it for now, but that means Fade is going to get back on the tower, continuing... To do some damage here as RRL is going to just use the last of his shrapnel charges and Warden is getting very close here but here comes Solji zipping in connecting onto RRL does he still not have he still doesn't have Vortex but the roar is going to be there they've locked RRL down they're going to be able to finish him off as the bushwhack actually hit two Moonlight gets pulled in as well they will find both of those kills Feeling was able to get onto the back line there to snipe out a kill onto the silencer so they get a kill in exchange ET but Two for one and your tower going down is is rough. Yeah, and it's the same situation they had the last time they picked up this bounty hunter where they just don't have wave clear. Defending these buildings versus a hero like Beastmaster is just a little bit too difficult for them right now. It's where they need a lot of farm and they need a lot of time and they can't let RRL get jumped onto. It's just a situation where he cannot make any more mistakes in this game. You'll just start to really fall behind. Then you don't have any item timings to play for. The BKB that you most likely need, or even just a Blink Dagger in this game, just doesn't come forward, and then you'd really start to just lose control of everything. Because Fade is just walking from lane to lane, killing your Tier 1 towers, and without Glyph getting refreshed, I mean, there's no real reason for him to stop. Because, yeah, there's not much you can do here, unless you have the Rubik in with you. I mean, and even the Rubik is suffering for levels right now. In that last engagement, who's level 3, buys the Tome, barely level 5, but... You're just not able to defend any of these buildings. Not the best smoke, because Fade was still tracked, but the supports are going to go look for a kill, and, well, does Moonlight just not bat an eye here? Well, Paradise able to time walk himself away from the gank up top. Is Moonlight's going to get hit up? Now, E.T. Oh, hold on. Ask you the question in a second. As Paradise may still go down, there's the Slight of Fist play, so they do find a kill, but... To the question, if your five-man Midas 
what is the play right now? You just lost all of your tier 3 towers in about 11 minutes, so what do you need to do to try and either buy time or, or maybe get aggressive themselves if they can? Well, I'll be honest, I was thinking of the, of the other end. It might just be Midas time. <laughs> I think that, that probably would give them a little bit more to play for here, but some nice kills as well. Getting the punish of them, just kind of placing the high ground wards a little bit too early, so... See if they get the D ward, then that was a completely wasted play from the silencer. But I think just get focusing on getting just those little items. You have double maelstrom up on five min minus pretty soon here, and then you have maybe a little bit more damage to play with. But I'm still waiting to see what Lies is actually just going to queue up and look to buy because he's sitting on thousand gold right now. Could be another item. Probably should just be the point booster for his ags, but. That's where uh, he could decide to go in a multitude of directions, but also just getting aggressive with feeling because he's got hook. It's time for him to go make some plays. He's looking for, I think, a blade mill as well. So that could be interesting, but oh man, this is just not the gank party. Bounty Hunter Rubik trying to kill heroes and RL. Uh -oh. Bushwhack's going to hit first. There's going to be the sharpshooter for the extra damage. There's a stolen Bushwhack to try and break this up though, but they will still lose RL, but feeling's able to get in there with the hook. So they do have the silencer kind of locked up here, but it's only feeling doing the damage. He will eventually get it, but his backup is getting taken down. Solji, able to pick up another on the back line, taking out the Rubik, and eventually that is going to go very definitively in Felt's favor with the 3 for 1. And, well, I think that one silencer kill that they got was a track kill, so they do get some gold for that as Lies is able to snipe out Fate's Courier. But other than that track, he wasn't really able to do a whole lot in that fight. Yeah, he was tanky. He ended up, you know, walking into the entire um, Beastmaster Menagerie and then walked away. So that's that's cool, you know, the Vanguard uh, <laughs> showing its effectiveness. But yeah, aside from that, I don't know. The, the gang squad is not very fearsome right now, unless the Clockwork's involved. And the Clockwork needs to start, I think, connecting here. Otherwise, you do start to lose your power spike with your levels and really start falling behind. But not mm -hmm. really finding that much. But okay. There it Kill. is. Kill. Why soul kill? Let's go. Catches the storm spirit off guard. Now has two thousand gold that he's sitting on. Maybe he buys a minus. Who knows? He's playing the, the role of the free safety there. It was Argus who sort of started that aggress onto the storm, forces him to zip away, and he zips literally directly in front of the bounty hunter. So Lies gets a bit of a freebie, and now might get another one. There's the track onto the silencer. Argus, though, is silenced up, so he's not exactly able to get in here at the moment, but they'll still find the kill. Comes at the cost of feeling over to the east, but track kills, doing some work, but now they need to be careful. Chrono is up, Paradise wants in. He doesn't hit onto Lies, though. It's only Argus, but they will take that kill. Solji's able to zip his way through the Chrono. Now they drop the Roar onto the Bounty Hunter, able to dust him up as well. And Lies will be taken down. Uh, RRL's actually in here as well, though, the Acorn. He's kind of keeping him locked in place. He does a lot um, of damage, yeah, but he's in a 1v3. That's a stolen roar, though, locking down Solji. RL has to basically kill himself for it, but he does manage to find that. Now Feeling comes in with the cogs for the push. Actually, doesn't push the Black Dragon there. He just kind of stands there awkwardly, but... Well, 5-man Midas, if a couple more of those had been track kills, this would look a little bit better. But as it stands, it is going to be a bit of a loss. Yeah. Just a little bit too expensive, and any time they're getting this sniper involved, he is just dying. He's just not really able to stand up just yet versus the pre push or really any of the heroes. And especially in jungle fights, just doesn't seem like the place where you're going to want to play. But it was a nice, nice idea trying to get the kill into the storm spirit as fast as possible with the stolen primal roar. But on um, with the overlord online, you're into the pit. Roche is just simply dying. And not much he could do. Clockwork is going to scout oh, it, on. though. And he's got the hook shot, so they're going to make their way out. over. And they do have to respect. Whoa. Oh, uh, feeling that might be trying to do a little too much. Maybe they can get the silencer kill here, but he is absolutely going to die for that. So feeling goes down. Fate, though, just got caught by the telekinesis, but here comes the storm. Soulji zipping in. Oh, he pulls RRL again. back with the vortex. Can they lock him down? Yes, they can. Bushwhack is there for the stun. They find the kill. Soulji, he's starting to run out of mana, so I think he's done chasing, but... Job done. Feeling goes in. They turn around the initiation. They find that kill onto Sniper again, and eh, they're back to Roche. Yeah, it's just any time he shows, he's just going to get jumped on. And now, uh, let's see who takes it. Yeah, I saw it. Dagon. 
more more damage okay. more damage for him to maybe burst some of these heroes with but yeah five man minus are uh are doing the thing again and now okay, hey look see, at that but, okay mobile though yeah still a silencer in the game and it would have been nice to just burn the Aegis quick and easy if maybe he had the Dagon actually out to him at that point. Or he did. He used it. Not bad. That's not good. I thought he was taking that fight without it. Apparently he did use it and they still didn't find the kill. Yeah, and somehow uh -huh. Argus soul kills uh, the Faceless Void, but yeah. Bounty. That's a bit unfortunate. They dusted at the end there too, which I don't think they needed. I think the Sentry still had the, the radius, but... Better safe than sorry, but as you said, Argus got a solo kill, and now he's dead to the warden. You you just can't you just can't get anything good going for more than like fifteen seconds here, and it just gets shut down. Mhm. Mm just feels like they're uh, not really playing. I think as fast, the decisions aren't really being made as quickly. Even though you do have a sniper who hasn't really been able to farm too much just yet, but gonna get his maelstrom, gonna start being that pseudo carry that you kind of need him to be, and as also where Argus is not too far behind on net worth either. He's right up there with the rest of the real game at this point, and he's looking for a Manta style so that we can just get out of the Global Silence for free, but we're top, keeping in, looking for a team fight. Okay. Yeah, but the problem is there's RRL on the back line, so Solji's gonna go in. Solji, though, by himself doesn't have the damage for it, so... He does back away, feeling still dies and the tower still falls, but RRL was able to take a, a fight without getting picked off. That's that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, step in the right direction. Still lose the tier 2, because they're yeah. still struggling to establish any uh, real map control right now, but could be worse and flies. Looking mid. Okay, they're going. In. Paradise, dead. Okay. You might get a return kill, though, with the sharpshooter. No. Well, fade will, though. Okay. Well, just able to get in there at the end. Dust popped, lies caught. So he will fall. But hey, track kill onto the faceless void. That's going to count for something. They're still keeping this deficit in a manageable position. It still leaves them down by 4k and they're losing another tier 2 tower. But without the track kills, this 5k lead would be 9 or 10k. Mm, yeah. And we'll have to see, because, all, again, all it takes is one team fight, and then suddenly everything starts to change, and okay, shot missed, but over on the other side, Ember Spirit, but there's your Manta, okay. and he could be out if he needs to. Well, is he going to be able to get away? He's trying to jump to the Remnants. Meanwhile, Fade did drop the Roar, so Feeling is going to get taken down. Argus, though, does burn the Aegis, okay? Can he get himself out now? He's still taking some DOT. Meanwhile, to the north, Fade. Just going to keep on going in. He takes down RRL before Lies is finally able to finish him. But I will say, Lies getting that kill is actually pretty big. That's a track kill, and that was a godlike streak on the Beastmaster that comes to an end. So all of a sudden, Bounty is swimming in gold, but... Um, did he just use it on Dagon upgrades? Was that the play for him? Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, he got... Uh, got... 1200 gold from it might as well buy another Dagon so now he's got Dagon too and I mean the damage is uh, is there it is uh, kind of just right in your face so gotta be maybe slightly careful but I don't know we'll have to see he's got a pretty good 15 town as well but for the storm continues to make plays anybody that shows during daytime it's gonna just feel like that I do wonder if uh, if the he takes the two second silence on hit with Shadow Walk. I feel like that's the better talent, especially in this game. Might be able to catch the Storm Spirit off guard. Probably silence him up for four seconds as top. Well, that's gonna be your Ember Spirit. Yeah, dead. Chrono on Ember, Sharpshooter from the Warden. They find the kill, and well, it's worth noting at this point. You know, the Silencer is still kind of sapping some intelligence off of these plays too. So. Plus 16 is not the highest that we've seen at this point. We did have that one game earlier on where he was just going absolutely crazy, but it's still a pretty decent, am ooh, decent amount in this scenario is feeling misses the hookshot because five man Midas have a lot of heroes with relatively small mana pools. As you're going to try to make a jump on the Solji, but he's able to zip away. The silence comes through afterwards, but He's still able to get himself out, but look at Fade. He's kind of waiting. Soldier though, doesn't want to wait. He's just going to zip in right now, baiting out the cogs, and 
It's a little bit of a risky one, but there's going to be the Warden coming in. Gets the Bushwhack onto two. Feeling's already dead. Lies. Just going to try to push in for the kill. Does manage to get it. But over on the other side of the river, RRL's in trouble. Global Silence going to be deployed. Now the Rubik is fighting by himself, and he's not going to be able to win this one. As Fade... Well, Fade does not get the kill. The Warden comes in to take it, but it's still going to be a team fight win, and one track kill onto Storm is not going to make up for that. Yeah, just used a few too many spells, and then, again, they're not near a tower. They're not near... A high ground they just are fighting on the low ground on even footing with a lineup that all they have to do is close the distance on you and then it's blown wide open and a team fight where the faceless void didn't have chrono at all that felt still win so it's still kind of rough workings that they're uh having to play with here for five men midas not to mention as well argus is still refusing to kind of join the team right now he's still looking for a lot of his own farm and he surely is getting a lot of these lanes and but not really participating in any team fight. It just feels like they're missing something right now. Yeah, and it's, it's unfortunate that he's not participating because he is still a lot of both their damage and lockdown in these situations, so I don't know. He's working his way towards a blank. Maybe once he has that, things change and he gets a little bit more active here, but that means five-man might just have to wait a little bit longer before he starts getting involved. Their other core is... Doesn't really feel like they're in a great spot either. RRL is working towards a Hurricane Pike. Honestly, that could be pretty big depending on how much mana Solji spends at the start of a fight. That distance may actually be enough to matter. But right now, Solji does not give a damn. He's going to push his way in onto Moonlight. They're going to silence him up. Quick and easy kill. Now they're in onto the Sniper himself. Feeling did try to hook onto the back line here, creating a bit of a distraction, but Solji just going to track it down really by himself. The Sniper's on the run. He's not going to make it. Meanwhile, the Roar blocking Argus down. He jumps in, but immediately has to jump back out because all of his teammates are dead. At least he makes it away, but that's just another terrible fight, and they're going to lose more. Lies gets caught in the chrono. Paradise is able to finish him off. Yeah, another four for nil. Just... Getting picked apart. They're not finding their way into the back line at all. Mm, he's so yeah, proud fight. Hey. Okay. That's not great rare. versus the Void, but great versus everybody else. <laughs> Always one of the interesting things, playing Rubik against a faceless Void. Just say, hey, look, I've got this cool spell, except I can completely screw over my entire team if I don't use it correctly. Which, in fairness, is how pretty much every spell works, but... Uh... Chronoing your teammates in particular is is a rough one. I've I've seen a I've seen a few great uh, ally chronos in my time. I've been They're, responsible uh... for some some, uh, some game losing chronos. But Moonlight Moonlight's gonna be hard pressed to whiff this, right? I mean, of all the of all the Rubik players, he should be pretty on point as long as he doesn't end up dying here. Is the bushwhack is gonna miss? So too will the sharpshooter hit. Yeah, and with the Chrono, maybe that's the AoE lockdown that their draft is missing for now. You know, you effectively have a Faceless Void. You'd love him to have a Blink Dagger, but this is an outlet for RRL to just right-click damage into. Could see them probably getting a kill in the Faceless Void if they do just straight-up find him or even the Storm. But this is a little bit more difficult of a kill. And they're zipping onto Argus. Oh, they saw Manta. Oh, here comes the Chrono. Uh, well, that didn't really work the way he wanted to. Argus still dies. RRL's going to get taken down as well. Feeling gets the hook shot in on to the Silencer, so they will find a kill. But again, it's just really not going to be worth it. As Moonlight's getting tracked in the tree lines, they'll take him down. They'll take Feeling down. Lies, not even really in the picture at that point, so he did not get to contribute. So it's... That's well, another four for one. I... I don't know how much more of this five-man Midas can put together, because if they're not finding track kills to counteract it, it's just, it's going to be a high ground push eventually. Yeah, and okay, it that's is just unfortunate. Okay. okay, yeah. Go game two, <laughs> 39 to 14. Yeah, five-man five Midas are finding their limit, you know, more and more as this uh, tournament has gone on, but yeah. A team fight where they overextend themselves so heavily that their sniper gets pretty much point blank melee roared and they lose everyone. It, G next. Oh. <laughs> Only so much you can take before you decide, yeah, this uh This isn't working, boys. Maybe maybe it's time to try again. Although in f well, not in fairness, but the counter argument to that is 
This is what the third time now that they've tried the bounty, and it, it didn't work the other two times. So maybe, uh, maybe there's a hint to be taken there. But if you're five man Midas, you're already eliminated. And I think at this point they're trying to they're trying to prove a point. They're trying to find a way for this bounty to work. It's just I I just haven't seen it yet. Yeah, and it just doesn't do what an off laner does right now, which is you know. Probably the most difficult thing because yeah it, it just doesn't feel like you can put tower pressure onto your opponents you don't have any lockdown or disables you know it, it's just bounty hunter which is you know <laughs> damage and track gold and and all of these you know hypotheticals but no it's not enough and we'll have to see because five man midas is last game here but is also felt's last game here and again tiebreaker wise felt it may be a slight advantage coming into that playoff seed bracket but yeah, do five men riders really go out here 016? We'll have to see. Yeah, it's it's going to be rough for them. But they've got one last chance, so we shall see if they can actually pull it off or if they will get that, uh, that dreaded zero win performance. But we are going to be moving into game two pretty quickly here, just a few minutes away. So we are going to be stepping away for just a bit. When we return, we'll see what game two has in store. So stick around. We'll see you on the other side of the break. 